Good morning. Good morning. Just so wake us up at four o'clock. Coming a habit. Mm. Getting used to it now though. Yeah. And when you have a sunrise like the one that we're being treated to right now, it makes it all worth it. Yeah, it does. Can you get the coffee on? Have you made sure the child's not playing with the fire? Yeah, he's not playing with the fire, he's got pots and pans. <laughs> anyway, big day today. Big day. We are in the Eastern Highlands of Zimbabwe and we are going to go and check out something called the Skywalk. John mm. is terrified. And it's just remarkable to stand here and listen to, well, I can hear some farm equipment in the background, but mainly to listen to the birds and just watch the day slowly wake up. It's truly spectacular. Four o'clock wake ups, not all that bad. Are you ready for adventure, Mr. Crusoe? Are you ready for adventure, Crusoe? Over bumps again. All right, so what's the first stop? Let's go down into town and see if we can find that Skywalk office that we saw on the road yesterday, shall we? Okay, so we'll go to the Skywalk office first. Yeah. And then head over to a waterfall and come back to the Skywalk office, or are we going to make it work? I don't know. Let's see what comes first. I don't know the lay of the land yet, so let's just drive and see what we get to first. Right here, okay. You like the moose, darling. You go and get it. Quick, because it's trapped to come in. Single track, gravel road, like dirt road. Dirt road, dirt track, yeah, to go to, I suppose also you might say that this is one of Zimbabwe's premier tourist attractions as well. Should, yeah, well it would be, yeah, with the skywalk now and the waterfall, it, it absolutely will be. And here we are. Love it. Made it. Right, so it's two different walks. Mm. One walk goes off 600 meters to the falls. Okay. And the other walk goes off in a different direction to the skyline and the skywalk. Got you. Shall we go to the skywalk first? Yes, I think we must. I think we must too. Are you excited, Crusoe? Yes. Skyline, yes. Mm. I know you're not worried because you're not afraid of heights. Yeah, I'm not afraid of heights. Ignorance is bliss. Okay, let's go. This way. Okay, my darling, I am genuinely starting to feel a little bit jelly-legged. Are you really? Yeah, because I've seen pictures of this. Crusoe and I are getting nervous. Crusoe's not nervous at all. I actually feel like Indiana Jones right now. <laughs> Oh, the birds are just beautiful. Look, there's the river. <laughs> Mouth's gone dry. How far down is that? Hmm. Really far. Uh -huh. What do you think? 
you think, my boy? You just said it, man. Let's go home. <laughs> Big wimps. The thing is, it looks like there's not just one bridge for us to go over. It looks like there's two. So there's a way out and then there's a way back. We've got to put harnesses on. It's that gnarly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try and tell me why do we need harnesses? So for us to take you through the skywalk, uh, you need to be on safety harnesses uh, in case you might fail to dizzy while walking. Okay. Or if there's too much windy and then if you're trying to take you down, you will be suspended using this sling. In the air. And my team will come and rescue you. <laughs> well, that little speech got John properly nervous. I thought it was hilarious. Triumph got us all safety harnessed up and we were ready to go. Crusoe's harnessed to me. I'm harnessed to something in a minute. This thing is going to go on a, and then we're all going to be safe. Okay guys, so I welcome you once again to Mutaras Falls National Park uh, Skywalk and Zipline. So this is the Mutaras Falls, uh, the highest water point in Zimbabwe, which is measured starting from there, going downwards to Wonde Valley, 762 meters. Yeah, so it's small class. So these are the skywalk, the first bridge is 37 meters, and then the second one is 90 meters. So you go by the short one and then come back by the longer one. Okay guys. Okay. Thanks Triumph, we're Thanks, excited. Triumph. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So in case you missed that because of the wind, the first bridge across the gorge is 37 meters long. Something of a warm up for the main event, the return bridge, which measures in at 90 meters. Now that he really knew what he was in for, John's nerves were setting in. And I'll admit, even mine were too. There's something about being suspended 760 meters above the ground that definitely That's gets amazing, the blood pumping. That's an amazing view over there. Epic, huh? Yeah, it really is. That bridge is making me nervous down there, I'm not gonna lie. Look at it. Okay, let's go. Wow. Oh my God, stop making the bridge bounce. I've never ever seen anything quite, I've never seen anything like that. Wow. Well, <laughs> spectacular, huh? <laughs> Did you look at the view at all? Uh, it's just like... Man. <laughs> yeah, really on my feet. Man, I really dislike heights. So that's the big walkway over there. Um, I'm going to stay on this side just for now and watch as Tara walks across the 90 meter span. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to do it. <laughs> no, it's very high, Crusoe. Look at that. Okay, so I've been abandoned by John, Crusoe and Triumph, and I'm going to walk across the 90 meter bridge on my own. Yeah. There is the Imtirazi Falls, Africa's second highest waterfall. Barbie's highest, and look at that view! Wow! Wow, look at that. This is unbelievable. Look at it. I mean, wow! Oh god, the wind is picking up. This boat is scary. John's feeling. You all right, my love? 
<laughs> he's turning around. I'm not quite sure what's just happened, but I think John might have chickened out. I'm not sure he's coming. <laughs> Oh, we got a second attempt being made. Be brave for Crusoe. Crusoe's little legs are kicking away. This is a big deal for John, everybody. Like a really big deal. He's so scared. And Crusoe kicking like that. Love, you're fine, I promise. My love, John. That was two false starts. I know, well, it was Crusoe's fault. He just didn't want to do it. No. <laughs> Crusoe looks just fine. Come, let's go together. Uh, no, you I think do I'd like, do that short No, one. come, I promise it's epic. My legs go like jelly. This oh, lesson in the newbie family is be brave. You've got to be brave for Crusoe. It's epic, love. You're going to walk over Africa's second tallest waterfall. You're fine. I promise. Come on. Going as a family. Brave mom leading the way. My mouth is dry. It does get windy out there, but I promise it's fine. I think I need a pint. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was epic. What a view. Wow. What a place. I am feeling profoundly and proudly Zimbabwean today because this is spectacular. With the big adventure done, it was time to head off to a very special project that we're super excited to share with you. So, this is the second place we want to show you in Zim and I am so excited to be here. This is Wild as Life the Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. They have an elephant rescue project here for orphaned baby elephants, which they then rehabilitate and release back into the wild in Victoria Falls. It's the most incredible project and we're hopefully gonna meet some of the little elephants. And um, they've also got giraffes here. It's absolutely beautiful. They have a pangolin, which we may be able to see. And Crusoe is hopefully gonna feed a giraffe. Hopefully feed a giraffe. I'm excited to see that. First things first, let's meet the elephants. So we've, we've just had an introduction and basically what we've been told is we're gonna see some baby elephants right away. They're gonna wander out and say hello. And then after that, we're gonna go and see some giraffe and possibly feed it. That's gonna be cool. And pangolin. then after that, oh, a pangolin as well. Pangolin, pangolin cool, pangolin. I've never seen one. Okay, so Angela and I went to school together and she, I think, has got the best job in the world because she works here at Wild as Life looking after the elephants and presenting to everybody who comes here to see what they do because the project is amazing. So rather Thank than you. me doing a voiceover and telling you all about the project, I'm just going to tell us what they do here. Thanks, Ta. Wild is Life and the Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. It started in 1998 by Roxy Dankwitz and her family. Roxy thought that there needed to be a place for orphan animals to come to, injured animals, animals that just needed a bit of help. So the elephants is a fairly new addition to Wild is Life. Okay. So Roxy called it the Zimbabwe Elephant Nursery. Basically it's a facility that she's created here for milk dependent calves to come to. Okay. So if a baby loses its mum for a poaching reason or if they've been abandoned in the wild, they can be protected by another cow or okay. sister in the herd. But even if a lactating cow is producing enough milk for its own baby, it can't adopt or feed another baby. Right. So that's where we come into it, yeah. where we have permission through national parks in this country to airlift the calf from wherever it is at the time and bring it back here to the early nursery. Wow. So here at Wilder's Life is stage one, okay. where the neonates come in, the okay. very small little babies, um, and then we give them the formula that they need. So it's yeah. a human baby formula wow. yeah, for these hungry little babies and um, the veterinary care, all the nursing that they need. Okay. The, ha the handlers have a very hands-on um, role by looking after them 24 hours a day. Wow. 
Um, and then once they've been weaned off the formula, which is when they're about four or five years old, okay. they've outgrown the light aircraft. So we then send them by road up to stage two. And that's where they graduate and become that's wild nice. ellies. Yeah. And they mix with wild elephant families and they have basically free range of 34,000 hectares of pure bush. That's incredible. And then eventually yeah. just wander off on their own to go and be wild elephants is yeah. the hope, isn't it? Exactly, That yeah. is so cool. The small herd of orphaned elephants at Zen are led by a self-appointed matriarch, a nine-year-old elephant called Moyo. She has the most incredible ability to welcome in the little newcomers. Often they're traumatized and Moyo takes them under her trunk and makes them feel at home at a time when they're likely feeling very lost and confused. She was the first elephant to be cared for here at the nursery and her story is truly remarkable. Okay, off to meet a pangolin now. Um, if I can just ask you to take the flashes off your cameras um, because pangolins are naturally nocturnal. But enjoy this moment of meeting her. So her name is Marimba and was sadly a victim of poaching. And she was about 12 months old when national parks confiscated her off the poachers. And it's believed that pangolins should be with their mums until they are about two years old. And she was only about 12 months old at the time. To meet a pangolin is a truly once in a lifetime opportunity. Elusive, secretive and nocturnal, pangolins are the world's most trafficked animal, sought after in the East for their scales, which by the way, are made of keratin, the same stuff as our hair and fingernails. They're in drastic decline across Africa and Asia and their future hangs in the balance. Marimba is closely guarded night and day and is setting records as the oldest pangolin in captivity in Africa. In fact, so little is known about these incredibly endearing creatures that no one really knows how many of them are left in the wild this today. This is the bit that I'm most excited about. Wow, isn't that cool? <laughs> Amazing. You know, it's really great to see a pangolin, that's for sure. And I love what they're doing with the elephants here. But to be able to feed a giraffe like that, it's very cool. It's very cool, isn't it? Look at this. Crusoe, he's coming to say hi. Wow, Crusoe. I know, my boy, isn't that fun? Just pet a giraffe. <laughs> She's saying you're winning. Now, I'm not sure what wins. Is it the giraffe, the pangolin, the elephants, or that the plate team. right there? Looks amazing. Look at that. Okay, coffee. Right. Coffee. Every visit to Wilder's Life includes something of a treat. Visit in the morning, and you're treated to this decadent and delicious high tea. If you come here in the evening, champagne and canapes will conclude your visit. The whole experience is so inspiring, uplifting, and feels like you're being thoroughly spoiled. And it's all for a good cause. If you'd like to get involved and support their work, then this next bit is for you. So if people watching this wanted to support the work of Safari Elephant Nursery, because I often, I follow you guys on Instagram and often see these incredible stories of these elephant rescues, which I know you've been a part of a few times, where they fly into different parts of Zimbabwe, collect these elephant calves and bring them back here to look after them and then release them. If people wanted to support that, 
How can they do that? So the easiest way, thanks for asking, Ta. The easiest way is to go onto the website. So anyone can go to ZimbabweElephantNursery.com. Dot com. Okay. And, cool. And um, there's just a, a little donate tab which people can click on, and then it directs you to PayPal. Okay. Awesome. So. ZimbabweElephantNursery.com we will put a link in the description below so please do check it out if anybody would like to support the incredible work that these guys do it is vital for the population of elephants in this country and so it is the only safe place for orphaned elephants to come in Zimbabwe the only people rehabilitating elephants into the wild and in this day and age it's just yeah it's incredible and it's so important so please hit the link below and um, go and check it out so that's a wrap from our really special visit here at Wild is Life. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it means the world to us and we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, it's a special one for me, sharing a few of my favourite parts of Zim with you all. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and please leave us a comment because I'd love to know what you think of the two places that we've been to in this episode. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you think. You know, If you'd like us to try and find more projects and more people to talk to on our travels, then we are all ears. Yeah, and remember um, the link, we've included the link to Wilder's Life, yes, isn't it? Yes, exactly. The link is below for Wilder's Life. There's a donate button on their website if you can spare anything at all. Even if it's 10 bucks. Even if it's 10 bucks, even if it's 5 bucks. Pay for goes, some of that elephant milk. Exactly, it goes a long way to supporting the little Ellies here who are being given a second chance at life. Cool. So, Peter, I think, is ready for a sleep, so let's get him his car seat and hit the road. We'll see you next week.